Hi everyone, welcome back to the Trailline channel. This is Richard here with Ross Haber, and today we're continuing on with our Chart of the Week series discussing OXY, Occidental Petroleum, um, and talking about its chart and also potential setups going into next week. Um, overall, this is from Ross Haber's Top 10 Report. If you want more information on that, or he posts his setups that he's watching uh, every single week, you can click the link down below uh, in the description as well as popping up on screen right now. Uh, and with that said, Ross, I'll hand it over to you. Uh, talk about uh, what you're looking at in terms of the chart, setups, entries, and the also overall group strength as well, because that's a key part of, uh, of what, what appeals with this name. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> as per usual, I'm going to let you... Uh cover the fundamentals ultimately, but like you said, it's hard to ignore, you know, this is the number two group out of 197. So, and you know, this entire sector is, has been at the top of my uh, relative strength and volume streams for months and months now. So in any event here, we've got OXY on the daily chart. Um, ideally, Right. So Friday, we saw volume pick up and it went through what we would consider a consolidation pivot or an early entry area. Let's call it, the, I think this is 59.84 or 59.83. Anyway, almost 60 bucks. So that is the ideal spot to uh, buy the stock. And then you can manage it versus the low, which also happens to be right at its 10 and 20 day moving, 21 day moving average. Um, we're not seeing it here, but it just so happens the 23 exponential happens to curve up and catch the breaks through the 21 pretty much perfectly. So it gives you um, plenty of logical areas to manage this risk, either on a you know closing basis, intraday basis, in pieces, however you want to do it. Now, in general, I don't like to, especially in a choppy market, have to buy a stock that's got that straight off the bottom move like this does from here so if it were to break straight through highs 6324 on monday to you know would it be ideal it wouldn't in most cases i would not buy it but when i look back at this stock it seems like oxy can just take right up off the bottom tighten up and ultimately lock you right out you can see it does it here again too big old breakout almost as if it were to do the whole thing have done the whole thing on Friday. So keeping that in mind, I almost feel like I'd be cheating myself, not at least putting it, you know, so how how big your position is and how you're ultimately gonna manage your risk is gonna be obviously uh, an individual choice, just wh whatever you do, man, make sure that, that that's done appropriately. Um, from my perspective, coming open to let's say, turn a swing or a day trade into a position trade, um, I really want to, even though it's it's not super tight, I need to be able to give this stock just looking at its personality, especially lately, at least, you know, that $3 and change is probably going to be a little closer to 340 350 So if I can get it on that 6324 I'm going to be pretty stubborn about holding on to that thing till the close watching 60 on a closing basis. So super tight, no, but I feel like that's, that's the room this one needs. So that's kind of how I would play it. However, buying it through the highs here, I'm definitely not, I'm going to buy less on strength and be more careful than if I'm able to, let's say, um, work my way into a position at support with uh, risk that's easier to manage. So that being said, I mean, it, again, this is like, you know, top tier group, one of the strongest stocks in the group. Um, it's, this is where you've got to be until, until, uh, the leadership tells you different. And then, you know, as far as fundamentals go, I'm going to let you cover that Richard. Um, and I'm sure if yep. you're looking around, so yeah, that's about, I mean, also anything technically that you, you know, that please fill in that I'm missing, but yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. there's not too much to add here. I mean, obviously the quarterly numbers down here, looking at the, the earning sales margins are. I mean, exactly what we hope to see from any stock, triple digit growth, earnings, sales, margins, improving as well the past uh, few quarters. Um, we've got amazing estimates for 2022, a little bit of a pullback back in 2023, but the estimates revisions are up. Um, and we've got a, a decent increase, not looking at the full two years, but basically from September 2020 upwards, we've got a nice steady increasing trend. 
none of the high quality funds in here, but uh, this, this isn't really a traditional growth type um, name. So uh, from a fundamental point of view, I think the biggest thing is that this is in a industry group and sector that is the leading industry group and sector right now, pretty much. Um, and on the technical side of things, I know some people were playing that Friday through this DTL as well. And uh, also you could have entered through these few highs here, uh, most notably with um, that consolidation pivot that Ross pointed out. So that would have been kind of the ideal entry point. Uh, but because of its strength, because of the industry group, uh, because this type of stock is working as of this moment, uh, we're watching for that constructive pullback uh, or that breakout through those all-time highs. So uh, just got to always remember you have to manage risk no matter what your entry point. And as Ross likes to say, it's got to be tight and logical, your stop loss point. Um, and, and that's the most important thing, risk management. That's what keeps you in the name in the game for the long run. So uh, with that, Ross, any, any last words to add on? on yeah, no, you know, I would just say, you know, this is one of those typical cases. So it's not, you know, it's not your typical traditional growth stock. And I would just point out, look at liquid. This thing is 42 million shares. This thing almost traded on Friday. Um, I, it just, it, that makes it so much easier to trade, especially if you're managing a fund or something like that. You can buy five and 10,000 shares at the market like water in this thing. Yeah. So that again, so that just you know, goes to show the, you know, it, it pays to be super flexible when, you know, you're seeing massive group move like we've been seeing and you can find plenty of stocks that look like traditional growth. Um, and are sporting these kind of earnings across the board with the sort of liquidity and respect we're seeing at logical support. You owe it to yourself to uh, be in those names until they tell you not to be. So, yep, absolutely. And we've got another, another few ideas on the top of the report related to this one that look pretty similar. The whole group is kind of shaping up here. Um, so once again, if you're interested in the top down report, check it out down below in the description. Um, and with that, thanks so much for watching. Let us know uh, what you think of this setup and the overall group down below in the comment section. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And we'll see you guys in future videos. Thanks.